So Charles always set me up. You want me to follow behind that, huh? <laughs> all right. Well. Okay. Get Whitney up here, and then all of a sudden I come out here to sing. What am I going to sing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's all good. It's just a thought to count, right? Amen. <laughs> so we'll make a joyous sound unto the Lord tonight. All right, well, thank you. My name is uh, Reverend Walter, and uh, thank you for being here today. we got a few new faces in the, in the place, and that's always a good thing. And uh, for those of you who are, <coughs> excuse me, for those of you who are new here, we are, we started a uh, series in the book of Ephesians uh, way back in uh, May, okay? And uh, today we are all the way up, we're almost finished with it, so y'all hold on, y'all tired of hearing about Ephesians, but you can never be tired of hearing about the good news, because somehow people make the good news old news, ain't that right? That's right. We don't know how that came about, but we're going to go ahead on and continue on the path of good news, because it's good news every time we hear about it. All right, so uh, you will turn with me, please, in uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, five, chapter 5, verses 3 through 6. Okay. All right. As uh, Brother Charles would like to say, I love when he said that, if I can get you to rest on your feet so we can uh, read that. I think that's good. <laughs> Oh, the windows. I got you. I got you. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I'm reading from the uh, the NIV translation, and I read, and uh, you can follow along with me if you will. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, of course, joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath Come on those who are disobedient. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come in here, Lord Father. And thank you, Father, for um, touching this, the, the, the young choir with uh, such mighty voices. And Sister Tanya sung such a beautiful song. And that was a song of encouragement. It gives all of us encouragement as to, uh, I mean, uh, what we all going through, that we got to keep on going. we got to keep fighting. And uh, I'm going through a lot myself, so that song was very touching to me and any other Christian that's going through some things. So thank you for allowing all of these people to sing such beautiful songs today. Father, I ask that you use your spirit through me to move in a mighty way to deliver your word in a way that it will be received, Lord Father, in a way that it will be taken with them throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. The name of this uh, sermon today is Be Careful. I woke up this morning and... Uh, my leg was, uh, as you know, I had hip surgery. My leg was completely hurting. It was in a lot of pain today. And I wasn't going to come. I was going to call Brother Charles and because uh, we always try to stay ready. And the motto is, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So I knew he was ready to go. But uh, as I was laying there, listening to the song that uh, Sister Tanya was singing, it's one of those things that if I lay here and I don't go, yeah, I could watch football all day and make it seem like that my leg hurt, which it really was hurt. You know, but and then Satan wins. Satan wins. Uh, you know, your leg hurting, just sit there, don't go, and just take a Sunday off. And so I said, the devil is a lie. That's so right. So I'm going to take a couple of painkillers. I spent uh, yesterday, went to the doctor and got some painkillers, and they gave me some more crutches as if I needed those. But yesterday I was hurting pretty bad. I didn't need them. So today, thank goodness, uh, I didn't need them today. So, well, we're going to get into this thing. Today is more be careful. And it's one of those things, church, I prayed to the Lord about this particular scripture. And it's just so many different ways that you could come with this thing. And this is what he gave me. So put your seatbelts on. This is, this is going to be a little different today, okay? All right. Church, uh, we're going to break it down into, as we do, verse by verse. Once again, Paul is holding God's children accountable for their actions, as he did earlier in chapter 4, verse 1. As he says, I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling in which you were called. Mm hmm so now, what they're saying is that you are Christians, okay, and we are called to be saints. 
sanctified simply means to be set apart for God's work. It means that we can't no longer partake in a lot of the uh, activities that the unchurched, unsaved do. If you have unsaved friends, that's fine and dandy, but you have to be a role model whether you want to be or not. You have to be the model citizen whether you want to be or not. We are Christians, we are set apart. It's easy to do in Rome as the Romans do. But we do in Christ as Christ do because that's who we mm. are. As Come Brother on. Charles says, it's Come imitators on. of God. Come let's on. imitate God. Let's not imitate the creation. <laughs> let's imitate the creator. That's how it's supposed to work. And the book of Galatians 5, 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back to under the law. Don't go back to all of the things that you did before you were saved. Come on. You just, you're bigger than that now. You serve a big God, a mighty God that has delivered you from slavery. Mm. So why would you want to go back to being a slave whenever he done took the shackles off? Whenever you can eat when you want to eat now. You don't have no orders or none of that. Why would you want to go back to living under the law? Which simply means living the way that the world is. That's what that means. <coughs> Doing the things that your friends do that's not in God's kingdom. You've got to be a representative. Represent. You've got to be a representative of Christ. Because as I say all of the time, people, keep in mind that as a Christian, this is real. You're the only church that some people are going to see. So represent when they do see you. So in other words, that means that Christianity is 24-7, 365. It ain't okay, I'm gonna wake up Sunday, I gotta get in my church mode. Dang, dang how this work. You're a Christian 24-7 because God is with you 24-7, right? That's right. So how could you take some time off? Okay, now, okay, um, today I wanna dig a little bit into this verse. What we're gonna talk about today is more of potential faults. I'm not telling grown people how to live, I'm simply telling grown people to just simply be careful. Because we get too smart on bridges sometimes, and we got this. And we got this usually end up in repentance. <laughs> you yes. see how that go? Yeah. That's what we got this means. Yeah. Satan loves it when we got this. Okay? So now, verse 3 talks about, uh, but among you there, are, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Church, there's so much temptation in the world today, we must be careful not to fall victim to it. We live in a world where sex is the main focal point of life today, sex and money. If you don't believe me, turn the radio on, turn the TV on, whichever one come on first. That's the one that's talking about sex first. It used to be back in our day, Charles and I, some of us older guys, is that you had to go to special channels to hear, see any kind of nudity, any kind of obscenity, any kind of profanity. Now it's on, uh, I think I was watching Channel 10 one day, they're cussing up a stone. <laughs> I said, when did all that start? When did NBC start cussing? So it's kind of like the world is, as the Bible projected, is going that way. Okay? So now, let's talk about this. Sex is a beautiful act, but it's meant to be between a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. let's, let's do that again. It's meant to be between a husband and wife. You young kids that are growing up and the young guys that are growing up, the more the merrier and all of that, how many people can't sleep with and you still a virgin and getting joked about that and all of that, that's that part of that set apart thing. That's that part of being set apart. We have to be set apart. We can't fall into what everybody else is doing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch on this just a little bit. We're gonna break uh, sexual immorality down into about five parts. And we're just going to touch on them. Don't want to make anybody uneasy or uncomfortable. We're just going to touch on them just a little bit, okay? Adultery. For all of the married people that's got to work out. Okay? Simply having sex outside of your marriage. So now, Satan attacks marriage. I've been married twice. And even both times, I was not a Christian. And that's why I say it was, twice. <laughs> because you follow the ways of the world. And one of the things we have to be careful with is being married is that Satan attacks the mind in both the man and the woman. 
He might go up to Brother Charles and be like, look at her. She don't even look the way she used to. She don't even cook the way she used to. <laughs> she don't even speak to you when you get home. And then she go to Ann, look at, look at Charles. Charles just, he don't care about himself. He don't care about you. He just do little things. Just little, just little, little knick-knack things to make the grass look so much greener on the other side. And you go to work, it's always a guy or a girl that everybody's attracted to. And now you're attracted to, let's just say that person's speaking to you every day. And you go home, your significant other don't treat you the way that you feel you should be treated, simply because of what's been put into your mind by Satan. Now that person at work gets more and more attractive, don't they? Satan, Satan, Satan play too much, don't you? Next thing you know, let's go to lunch. I ain't going to lunch with you. The next thing you know, ah, one little small lunch won't hurt nothing. We don't even need to talk about that no more, do we? Right. As we see what that leads up to. You see how Satan, Satan works in small increments. He'll never just hit you with a big old thing. He, a little, little bit of something, a little innocent dinner. First, I'm going to take my girl with me, you know, and we go to dinner. And then next thing, my girl ain't going no more. <laughs> Should I say to build that thing up to small increments? Be careful when you're married. That's why the Lord says a triangle should be God, the husband, and the wife. Not a threesome. Not a threesome where the wife go get a husband, a birthday present, bring in another woman, or vice versa. Uh -uh. That's, that's, that's part of that, that, that kinkiness that's not welcome in the body of Christ. Right. Okay? Now, fornication. Fornication, let me tell y'all something. One of the hardest jobs in the entire world. I always ask, is there a harder job than being a Christian? There is one job harder than being a Christian. Being a single Christian. <laughs> there is nothing in the world harder than being a single Christian. I promise you. Nothing harder than being a single Christian. Now, Fornication is single-handedly one of the hardest, most things to not participate in, simply because sexual is such a very pleasurable act. So church, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself, young people. Try not to put yourself in intimate settings. I know who I am. I know whose I am. All of that, all of that. You find yourself in repentance, what's gonna happen. Uh -huh. Don't put yourself in intimate settings, especially with people that you're attracted to. That's real talk. Okay? Try not to watch TV or on the computer sexual explicit stuff. Because you're planting seeds is what you're doing. It's hard enough to go through life single as a single Christian because you've got to wait on God to send you who he's going to send you. But Brother Charles said it about, about probably about Mm, about four months ago, what are you watching? What kind of content are you putting in? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you're putting all of this stuff in your head, that's what you get out. If you put the word of God in, that's what you get out. So if you're sitting there wondering how you slipped and fell and had sex, and you're going home and you're watching all of these sexual shows, you're looking at pornography, you're looking at sexual magazines, which is pornography, the form of it anyway, and you wonder why you slip and fell. Don't do it. Okay? Sexual music. You might as well just turn the radio off. <laughs> you might as well just turn the radio off. You have to listen to godly music. When you're a single Christian, of course you want to listen to other music, but you just, if you're keeping it real and you're being real with yourself, you have to listen to godly music. And, and my sons used to joke me, Dad, that's all you listen to. Because whenever you listen to the other stuff, I don't see nothing wrong with a little bumping and grinding and, and, and Usher talking about nobody can kiss it like you and all that kind of stuff. You, you're setting yourself up when you're listening to that stuff. Because believe it or not, you're going to have some bad nights where you get to thinking about all of that stuff. And the last thing you need to do is go enhance it by listening to that type of music. Uh -huh. oh, it's just music. I'll be all right. And what does Satan do? Satan is kind of like a... Uh, it's kind of like the Second Timothy 2 and 15 says that to show yourself approved, okay, to rightly divide God's word. And what Satan does, he's kind of like a, a secretary with a video recorder, where he's rightly dividing all of the wrongful things that you did in life, and he's plugging them in your mind as needed. <laughs> so later on, you sit in the bed by yourself, and he'll replay that show again, just as clear as day, ain't it? You can just see a person naked or something you watch on a TV show. Later on, clear picture comes in your head. Now he's planting all those seeds in your head. And that leads to impure things. 
be careful is all I'm saying to you. I'm not trying to tell you what to watch. I'm not trying to tell you who to talk to. When you're on the phone, teenagers, young kids, been there, done that. When you're on the phone, what you doing? What you got on? What you wearing? Grown people too. It ain't just teenagers. It's grown folks too. We're on the phone. That's out of God's order. That's out of God's order. Now people, let me tell you something about that kind of thing. Is that 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 talks about we're human. So if you see a guy or a girl that you're attracted to, that's normal. That's normal. It is really, really normal to be attracted to somebody of the opposite sex. But God gives you a way out if you say, help me, Jesus. Everybody here know what I'm talking about. You don't have a chance to slip and fall and go do something you weren't supposed to do. And all of a sudden, something happened. The phone rung or either <laughs> somebody came over or something or the phone hung up. You're on the phone talking about something improper. Then all of a sudden, the phone just hang up on you. It's godly intervention. Do you take that and say, okay, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm going to quit talking about that. Or do you call the person back and finish? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? At that particular time, as we said a couple of weeks ago, who's your dad? Right. At that particular time, who's your dad if you call back? Let's finish this conversation. That was inappropriate in the first place, okay? So now, scripture that talks to us about that says that marriage is to be held in honor amongst all. And the marriage bed is to be undefiled for fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Let's talk about another one, being young and a lot of people of the world. See? When we talk about these things, if it don't pertain to you, you'd be like, how can somebody do that? You'd be surprised at who people are when they get behind closed doors. You'd be surprised at who people are when they get behind closed doors. Sexual perversion. Okay? Pornography. Exposing yourself. Okay? Walking around uh, with fetishes. Peeping toms. Incest. Masturbation. This all sounds like some sick stuff, but it happens every single day. Day. by your teachers, sometimes your pastors, sometimes your co-workers, sometimes your best friends, sometimes your family members. You hear about this stuff every single day. So whenever this kind of thing is said, I'll be like, well, I, I ain't worried about it because you ain't talking about me. Well, it might not be. But I promise you, in your life, you got a golden calf somewhere. And we all know what I mean when I say golden calf. What you used to do. Who you used to be is still in there. It's still in there, so don't get it twisted, okay? We keep it sleep by reading God's word and building that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord. Okay, be careful, church. Be careful with that. Now, everybody, we talk about immorality of the mind. Immorality of the mind. If you look at somebody and be like, man, she looks really good. I bet you this and I bet you that. You just sing. Mm -hmm. If you look at a guy, man, he sure is fine. I'm boy, I tell you what. That's sin. That's sin. It really is. And uh, he says, uh, well, Jesus talked about it in Matthew 5, 28, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. I ain't no big fan of that one because, of, you know. <laughs> you say I ain't no big fan. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real because that's messed up, you know. You look at somebody, you get the credit for it, and you ain't even touch them. I just, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I ain't the only one feel this way. I'm just the only one that to say something about it. Uh, Jesus, that's messed up. You get all the, you get all the props for fornication, and you ain't touch nobody. So I ain't the only one feel that way. Y'all talk to you blue in the face. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm just the only one that to say something about it. So now we're gonna touch on this one real simple: uh, homosexuality. Has, run, has gone rampant in the world today. It has. It's a sin, people. Now, I don't judge homosexuality. I'm not homophobic. I grew up with a lot of homosexuals, some of the best friends I got. In, uh, in the military, I had some homosexual friends. Mm -hmm. I don't judge you about what you do when you're not with me. It's how you treat me and how you act towards me, around me. Now, but the law says that it's wrong. And that's all we're going to do on that. We ain't going to get deep into homosexuality. You see all of these married couples and men marrying men and women marrying women. And i seen the, uh, what the world show was that? The Grammys or one of these shows with Queen Latifah was, was uh, marrying all same-sex couples and things of that nature. That's sad. I was a big fan of hers until I seen that. That's, that's sad. 
It really is. Because it seems like everything that God says today that's an abomination somehow has turned into a celebration. How did that work out? <clears throat> Once again, it's the same thing happened in the Bible in the early times. Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. That's the same thing that got Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. Mm -hmm. That attitude. Okay? So scripture that tells us about homosexuality, you not lie with a male as with a woman. It's an abomination. That's Leviticus 19 and 22. Because you uh, uh, you hear people like Charles and I, well, we worked at the CBN. You hear, we get these kind of calls all the time. We get married calls where women say, well, I was considering having sex outside of my marriage. Could you pray for me? And the first thing I have to let them know is that you're normal. It happens. It happens. You get people with homosexuals call and say that I'm a homosexual and I want to stop being a homosexual, how I go about it. Mm -hmm. And you got to pray with them. You get all kind of calls over there. It's, this is real stuff. Okay, now let's move on right along. Okay, into uh, verse 4 it says, Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, of course joking, which is out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Church is God's people. There is no place in the body of Christ for profanity, obscene jokes, obscene gestures, flipping people off with the bird, all that kind of stuff. That's just out of place. Once again, we are set apart. In the Navy, we call it the water, the water found scutterbutt. We had scutterbutt jokes. And you find out pretty quickly, for those of you, if you had any uh, military time, is that military humor is just that. Military humor. <laughs> they don't the ones find it funny. Any right saying? You understand? Me? But what I'm saying, though, is that profanity, cussing, and that's one of the things young kids got to uh, be careful with. You can't wait to get old enough to cuss. All you do is just cuss up a stone. Your parents get that there's, there's the kid at home, and then there's the kid that's away from home. Just cussing. Cussing up a stone. And then you got the adults. We get hot. Even though we're Christians, we get hot. We have to ask God to guard our mouth. Because I've had some bad days, and uh, I pulled the job, and I, I, I got to repent for a lot of stuff. I get hot sometimes. But it's human. You're human. We got to be careful. Now, telling dirty jokes that degrade women, degrade kids, degrade people, that's funny. But you hurt somebody really bad. And that's not what it's about. We're here to edify people, not to down people. So now, with me, that's something that, as God helped me write this, I have to be careful myself. But there's not a doubt in my mind that I could have been a comedian. But God never would let it take off. I thought about it. I went to a couple of stand, uh, the open mic nights. But something, now I know what it is, would never let me walk up there. I had the material and everything. It was just not in my cards. So that means, therefore, I have a sense of humor and I have a tendency to joke with people sometimes. But I have to be careful. And the Lord has been on me heavy about stop doing that. Because to walk worthy of the calling in which you were called. So now we have to walk worthy as Christians, but being called to, to be a potential pastor one day, you got to take it even a higher level. And he says, keep your sense of humor. Now he's not saying people don't, jokes are funny. Jokes are funny, but you understand what I'm saying. The dirty jokes, the jokes that offend people. And you got to understand that everybody doesn't have your same sense of humor. Everybody is not like you. <laughs> and you'd be like, but I just said this, and you're offended. Yes, if it bothers them, then it's offensive. Everybody grew up in different households, different cities, different towns, different rules. <laughs> and so some things are offensive to them that may not be offensive to you and your crew. Uh, he tripping about this, this, and this. Uh, she mad, but I ain't nobody thinking about that. No, nah, as, as, as Christians, if it bothers the person, we should apologize and not do it again. Somehow that falls up under treat people the way you want to be treated. How about that? Amen. How about that? Ain't that something? Thank you, Jesus. You just gave me that. Mm -hmm. So if you think of being silly, now plug that in there. You want somebody to tell jokes about you and everybody in the room laugh? You want somebody to hurt your feelings? You want somebody to be mean to you? Treat people the way that you want to be treated. And somehow, whatever we flip that thing like that, now all of a sudden it makes sense when it's our turn, don't it? 
as my cousin and Tanya, what? Well, my cousin Tanya, my other cousin say, uh, it ain't funny whenever the rabbit get the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It ain't funny when the rabbit get the gun. So for you kids that didn't understand that, you go rabbit hunting and there's all these people going to shoot that one little rabbit and then the rabbit might already get the gun. Now everybody all the hunters got to take off running. <laughs> it ain't funny no more. The dang rabbit crazy. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? It ain't funny when the rabbit get the gun, okay? So now, people, think about this. When you, when you have your little jokes that are not funny and stuff like that, are you laughing with people or are you laughing at them? See, if you say both, then you got a problem. Laughing with somebody is cool, <coughs> depending on the content. Okay, depending on the content, because if they're having ungodly content, then you shouldn't be laughing with them, even if it's funny. And that stuff is still funny just because it's not ungodly. I'm, you know, I'm not saying that. But you should kind of remove yourself from that atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Okay, so now, do not take part in gossip. <laughs> Did I just lose a lot of people with them? <laughs> Did I just lose some people with them? Don't take part in gossip. Ain't nothing like some old, some juicy gossip. Let's talk. What? You got some stuff to sit down and talk about? What happened? What she say? What he say? Gossip is ungodliness. And let me tell you the negative part of gossip. If Brother Charles and I gossip about somebody, somehow what I said makes it back to Tanya, it ain't even what I said. How does that get twisted up like that? And then that starts a whole bunch of mess, don't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't take part in gossip. Amen. My mom taught me all the time. It took me 40 years to understand this, and she, she finally explained it to me in the car one day. <laughs> she, she said if a dog would bring a bone, okay. he'd take one back. And you know when your mom said that kind of stuff, you'd be like, right, 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 you know. <laughs> you, know how you, you know how mature Christians do sometimes? You know, yes, yeah, pastor say this, yeah, right, 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 right on, pastor. But we don't want to raise our hand and ask him, what does that mean? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I've been for 20 years. i got to know what that means. Now, we're all learning. Now, for the, those of you that didn't understand that, if somebody comes to you, if she comes to you telling you about her friend's business, she will go back to the friend telling the friend about your business, too. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. I asked my mom and that right along with this long hammer spoon. We, <laughs> you know, from the country, we got a, we got a lot of them. Like, we got a lot of those. Feed people with long hammer spoon and all that. But we won't get into all that. That's a whole other sermon. But I'm telling you, if a person comes up to you gossiping about somebody else's business, look at it from this perspective. Like that sounds like that's personal. And you telling me about it? And I'm sure when they told you, it was supposed to be in confidence. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So that means that be careful about your confidentiality partner. Yeah. It should be the Lord. And if you're married, then it's more likely your wife or somebody that's really close to you. Be careful about who you tell all your business to. It will come back to bite you. It's sad, but it's true. People get mad and they will use that stuff against you. Stuff that you told them deep, stuff that, that came deep from your heart. They get mad at you, they'll throw it back in your face. That's why you da 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 da. You're like, oh my goodness, no, you didn't go there. <laughs> no, you didn't go there. Now I got to jump on you. <laughs> no. Well. You know what I'm saying? Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Y'all understand that? Okay. All right, now look at verse 5. For. Of this, you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such per, such person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and of God. People, as Christians, be genuine in your friendship. Be real. Don't befriend somebody simply because of who they are or what they got. My God says supply all of your needs. All of your needs. Mm -hmm. By his glorious and riches by Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. You don't count on somebody, well, I'm going to get close to him because he got this. So I'm going to get close to her because she got this. You don't need him. You need God. God will supply all of the things you need in your life. And if God needs a person to give you something, he will put them in your life. See how that works? Amen. He will put them in your life. 
If God wants Pastor Charles to give you some young lady, he will put Pastor Charles in your life. Well, you don't go be friends with him because he's the pastor of the church and I need to know him. I need to be close to him. Well, it shouldn't be for selfish reasons. It should be for reasons that you have somebody that you can talk to in the event in a time of need. Okay? So now, if our motives are not pure, God knows. And we got to answer to him. And that's why God tells us not to judge people because all we can see, what, is a white shirt, jeans, tennis shoes. God sees your heart. Amen. He sees your heart. That's why he tells us not to judge people because we don't know a person's motives. God does. Okay? So now, in the body of Christ, we're supposed to be selfless, not selfish. Think about that. That's deep right there. Selfless. Helping. Lending a hand where you can. Not wanting nothing in return. Going above and beyond. Not saying if I give him $5, he owes me. He on the hook, baby. He on the hook. <laughs> okay? Not saying if I cut Charles' grass later on down the line, he's going to let me use his lawn more because I can throw that back in his face. Just give me some examples here. Okay? Selfless, not selfish. All right, and then let no one deceive you with empty words, for because such things God's wrath come upon those who are disobedient. For what fellowship does the light have to do with the dark? And church, let's, let's talk about that for just a little bit. Jesus is not saying that we're supposed to avoid unbelievers. Simply because that's who he wants us to bring to him through our walk and not our talk. But what he's saying is, be careful. Be careful who you hang with. Because some people just don't have good intentions. Some people, how can you expect people to serve a God who they don't know? How can you get mad and say, I can't believe you did that. He inside of me is greater than he that's in the world. That thing is big. When you look at people and they act crazy and they're not Christians, it's because they don't have inside of them who you got inside of you. So you have to be careful of who you hang with. You got to be a fruit inspector at all times. One of the things we have to be careful with with this type of people that's just not going to do right, Christianity is a, is a lifestyle that our life has to be adjusted to fit. We're not to make Christianity fit our lifestyle. Well, we're going to take ten of the commandments and say, well, I like them six right there. Uh, maybe number eight. But the other three, we're going to have to work that out. That, that, ain't, that ain't how they work out. God's pretty simple. You do ten, and I'll be your God. You do seven. I'll still be your God, but you're going to ask the script, what's the scripture of meditation say? You're going to reap what you sow. <laughs> okay? That's how that works. Reap what you sow. All right? So, church, be careful. Make it your business to hang around doers of the word. Make it your business to hang around people that are walking the walk. You guys know what I'm talking about. Make it your business to hang around people that are walking and not talking. Because we all know that Lucifer knows the Bible inside and out, sideways, upside down. How could he trick you if he didn't know the word? How could he trick you? How could he deceive you if he didn't know the word? Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so now, in closing, remember, church, this is big. Remember that who you used to be is still in there. And the only way you keep that suppressed is through reading God's word and talking with God, building that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him every day. That's how you keep your spirit sitting higher and be spirit-led than being fleshly-led. If you go a couple of weeks without reading the Bible, you start to notice. You start to get mad a lot quicker. Profanity might fly at your mouth a little faster than normal. This is real talk. Everybody here know what I'm talking about. Go a couple of weeks without reading the word. I'm not, I'm not condoning this. And I'm not saying this. But for some of us that might go a week or two without reading God's word, your anger comes out a whole lot faster. So you see it work. Your temper gets a lot shorter. Your patience. All of the godly attributes, they shorten 
Has anybody not known each other? Of course we have. The way we admit to it now is a whole nother ball game. <coughs> Read God's word so you can keep the old you pressed down. Paul is all talking about in the book of Ephesians is that understand the God that we serve, the mighty God that we serve, and simply how he puts up with us when he should and how thankful we should be for this mighty God. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word, Lord Father. Father, thank you. And Father, be with the young kids and be with all us adults, Lord Father. Save us from ourselves. Crucify our flesh daily, Lord. Allow us to crucify our flesh daily. Cover us with your blood daily, Lord. Save us from ourselves, Father, because sometimes we get too smart for our own good, Lord Father. Sometimes we want to do things that we know we shouldn't do simply the same way Adam and Eve did when they could have ate from any tree. And they decided to eat from the tree that you told them not to. And people still to this day are doing things that they shouldn't do, want the things that they shouldn't have when they can have all the other things. So, Father, I ask that you be with us. Love on us, Father. Guide us. Teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right this is the part of the sermon where... Um, if any of you don't know Christ, if any of you don't know Jesus, and you want to get to know Jesus, the majority of you guys are Christians in the house tonight, and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But if there's anybody here who is not a Christian, and keep wondering why you're messing up, keep wondering why you're still getting the same place that you've been, keep wondering why there's something missing in your life, you're not sure what it is. I feel good, I got a job, I got money, but it's something missing. I don't know what it is. And what's missing is the Lord. He made it that way from the very beginning. So even out there in YouTube land, simply if you want to come to Christ and get it right, make it right. Simply, Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Just that fact, you can change your whole life. Amen. Jesus died to take the middle man out the way. You don't need me. You don't need Pastor Charles. Jesus is with you. He said, I stand here at the door. Here I stand. And I knock at the door. And if you let me in, I'll come in and eat with you. And you eat with me. And we'll be together forever. He said that himself. Amen? Amen. So, anybody that's out there listening on YouTube, if you want to become a Christian, you don't need to get a fanfare. Just you and Jesus. One-on-one -on -one relationships. So what better way to start off your one-on-one -on -one relationship than asking him to come into your life, just you and him. Mm -hmm. How awesome would that be? Now, you need to share it with somebody when you do do that. Mm -hmm. So that way you give him the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And if you don't have a church home, we would love to have you here at Living Hope. We're growing. And uh, it's all about the word in here. Not a whole lot of fanfare. We love God. God loves us. And we're all about growing in God's word. We're all about learning God's word. Pastor Charles and I talk a lot when we got when we got time. And we talk strictly God's word. Strictly God's word because this is how we're supposed to act. This is not a Sunday thing. This is not a Tuesday thing. This is a Sunday through Sunday kind of thing of how you're supposed to act each and every day. Amen? Amen. All right then.